Von Miller takes a pay cut. Taylor Rapp returns. Mitch Trubisky is brought back. And some thoughts on the offensive line. We've got even more roster transactions to reflect on today on Locked On Bills. You are Locked On Bills. Your daily Buffalo Bills podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I am your host of Locked On Bills. I want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, I appreciate y'all being here very, very much. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, folks, welcome in. We had a massive podcast last night where we reflected on the release of Mitch Morris, Jordan Poyer, Trey White, Deontay Hardy, and Saran Neal, the cap conversion of Rasul Douglas to save $2.5 million, the signing of Matt Hawk and David Edwards. We did that in the last episode. But the moves didn't stop. Brandon Bean has no chill right now. He's getting a lot of things done here when it comes to creating salary cap space for the Buffalo Bills. And so while I recorded that episode, the Von Miller news comes through. And then shortly after that, the Taylor Rapp extension, the Mitchell Trubisky news. And so we've got to catch up here today. So again, if you're looking for my reaction to all that other stuff, Go back to one episode and you'll you'll catch that. Today, this episode is about Von Miller, Taylor Rapp, Mitchell Trubisky, and a thought that I have about the offensive line given some of the moves that were made there. I know that you guys are waiting for my mock off season. It was fully my intent for it to be the episode before this one, but with all of these moves, it really, it really blew the whole thing up. And so I'm adjusting that. And it's my full intent to give it to you on Friday. And and I'll do the whole thing. It's just I had to make a lot of adjustments, and nothing's quick and easy about that. So we'll get you the mock offseason, but I need to reflect on this stuff first. And obviously, the mock offseason is super dictated by everything that's went down over the last several hours in the world of the Buffalo Bills. But let's get into the new news. (laughs) Von Miller. He took a pay cut, a big pay cut. According to Field Yates, Bills and pass rusher Von Miller agreed to a renegotiated contract. The deal has a base value of $8.9 million in 2024 with the chance to make up to $20 million with incentives, which is actually up from $17.5 million under the old terms, the move saves Buffalo about $8.7 million in 2024 salary cap space. I am stunned. He straight up took a massive pay cut to help the Bills. He walked away from significant guaranteed money, a lot of it, and he didn't have to. He just literally conceded several million dollars. And it's surprising. I didn't have this on my list of possibilities for cap clearing. But you could tell Brandon Bean thinking it all through. Shooting every shot that he possibly can. I can't imagine what that conversation was like. But it's extremely helpful for the Buffalo Bills. The other part of this, not only do you get $8.7 million in cap savings right now, you can get out of this contract after 2024 and save $5 million in cap space in 2025. Now, there's a dead cap accumulation of $20.7 million under those circumstances. But you're seeing teams become more and more willing 
to take on dead cap space. It's kind of a thing that's happened over the last couple of years in the NFL. In the past, like you go back three, four, five years, it would be crazy to take on dead cap hits like that. But as the cap has went up, I think you've seen teams a lot more willing to take on some dead cap. And so, yeah, you don't want to have $20.7 million in dead cap for Von Miller in 2025, but you do save $5 million in space. And previously, this contract was looking like something the Bills had to kind of stick with this year and next. They got a real chance to get out of this thing after 2024. To me, this pay cut and how this contract is now structured really changes the outlook here. Now, Von Miller still needs to come back and be something close to what we expect from Von Miller. That That's still got to happen. But the cap relief now, the opportunity to get out of the deal after this season, boy, oh boy, is that exciting. Very, very exciting. So Von Miller, renegotiated contract, takes a pay cut, didn't have to, helps the Bills a ton, was not on my list of possibilities for creating cap space. I just don't think you can ever assume that any player is going to walk away from money like that. Here we are. The Buffalo Bills have signed Taylor Rapp to a new three-year contract worth up to $14.5 million. I want to see what the contract structure is here. I think you can look at the initial tweet and the initial information that came through and there'd be a little bit of sticker shock because it's hard for me to reconcile how Taylor Rapp came to Buffalo last year and played one year, $1.8 million plays less than half the snaps on defense and is suddenly in position to take a three year, $14.5 million contract. So I want to see how it's structured. And we've been through this so many different times with the Bills. And, and really, it's not just the Bills. If you pay attention to the entire league, it happens all the time where the initial news share is completely agent dictated. They want the whole world to know that their client got this many years and this much money. When in all reality, the way it's structured tells a very different story. I mean, you even heard this when Von Miller signed with the Bills initially. It was a six-year, $120 million contract, right? That's the full terms. But in reality, the original structure was three years and then nothing guaranteed beyond three years. And so if you go back to the video that came out of Von Miller, I think it was on his own vlog on YouTube, you could see him talking with his people and saying, so on the ESPN ticker, it's going to say six years, 120 million, right? Like it's all ego, right? That's, that's what it really is. And for agents, they want to be able to tell the best story possible about how they've maximized the earnings opportunity of their client. And so for the insiders to get information, right, they have to put it out there in a way that appeases the agents, that way they can continue to get more information. So if you want a little inside look as to how the NFL insider game goes, there you have it. So three years worth up to $14.5 million. Again, I want to see the structure here because I don't really understand going from a one-year $1.8 million contract, not having that great of a season, and all of a sudden you're three years worth up to $14.5 million. But let's do talk a little bit more about Taylor Rapp, 26 years old. I'm a little surprised he's that young, right? Like he's played five seasons in the NFL. He's still 26. He actually doesn't even turn 27 until December. So I'd classify this as his age 26 season. 2023, he played in 16 games for the Buffalo Bills, started four games on the field for 42% of the defensive snaps, 49% of the special team snaps, collected 50 tackles, two pass breakups, an interception, a fumble recovery, a tackle for loss, and a half sack. I thought for a one-year, $1.8 million contract, the Bills got great value out of the deal. 
Now, I was certainly hoping for a little bit more, and it took Taylor Rapp some time to really settle in. And I, I really enjoyed Taylor Rapp with the Rams. I enjoyed him in college at Washington. And he was a player. If you go back to my mock off season in 2023, I had the Bills signing Taylor Rapp three years, $24 million to be a starter for the team and then not bring back Taylor uh, Jordan Poyer. So like one year removed from this, this was my plan. This was literally my plan for the Bills at safety before they even signed Taylor Rapp was for him to replace Jordan Poyer. And so all of a sudden you're in this world where they bring back Jordan Poyer last year. They still signed Taylor Rapp and Taylor Rapp fills this role as a third safety. And you could see early on in the season before Matt Milano got injured, Taylor Rapp served as this third safety. He uh, played some snaps down in the box. I don't think it went particularly well. And then before you know it, Matt Milano's injured. They got Tyrell Dotson on the second level, and they have to do, you know, do some musical chairs in order to have good coverage options on the field on long and late downs. So Taylor Rapp comes into the game. Jordan Poyer goes to linebacker. Tyrell Dotson comes out. And that was what happened for a large percent of the, of the season. And, of course, Taylor Rapp had a few spot starts along the way, filling in for Poyer and Hyde as they both missed a little bit of time, uh, respectively, in 2023. But I go back to being at Bill's camp for a week and, and watching Taylor Rapp. He was one of my favorite players to watch. He's an athletic guy. He's rocked up, right? The dude dude knows where the weight room's at for sure. And he looked like he was going to be a real player for the team. And I think the evolution of the season changed the original plan for Taylor Rapp. I thought, oh, again, again, I think there was some inconsistency on tape with Taylor Rapp, whether it's angles, tackling, getting to some landmarks and coverage a little too much friendly fire, right? Like I thought there were some reckless moments in how he tackles and arrives to the ball carrier and he's taking out his own teammates, right? Like there's some things to clean up here. I, my initial reaction is that I don't necessarily love this. But I will say that the silver lining here is something I've talked about so many different times over the last several months in this podcast. It's that Sean McDermott's history with safeties is off the charts. And so if I'm looking for a silver lining on something that kind of confuses me based on my own personal preferences, it's that Sean McDermott is choosing Taylor Rapp and choosing Taylor Rapp after spending an entire season with him. He knows exactly who Taylor Rapp is and spent a year with him and said, I want that guy to be a starting safety for me. They signed him to this type of deal to be a starter. That's very clear to me. And I've said all off season long that I just trust Sean McDermott to figure it out at safety. This is step one. Well, I guess real step one is cutting Jordan Poyer, not bringing back Micah Hyde. All right, now you're signing Taylor Rapp to be a starter for you. So we'll see how it goes. But it feels like maybe some of the moves that I've questioned more for the Bills, whether it's rolling with Terrell Bernard at linebacker or you know, some of their decisions at corner, seem to work. They seem to work on defense. And so I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt and see how this plays out. They should have plenty of intel on who Taylor Rapp is. And clearly, this is the direction that they want to move forward with it, with at least one of their safety spots. Now, they still need another starter. I'm looking for them to add a more, more of a center fielder, uh, deep zone defender to complement Taylor Rapp, who I want to be more in the Jordan Poyer role. So I think Taylor Rapp is your Jordan Poyer replacement. Curious to see who the Micah Hyde replacement is. Plenty of options out there. Plenty of them. I've said that repeatedly. There's like 15 plus safeties on the market that I'd be satisfied with. But now that you know one of them's Taylor Rapp, curious to see which of the center fielder types they like. And I'd also love to have Cam Lewis back, maybe to compete as the starter opposite of Rapp, but at least for the depth that he provides, the special teams that he provides. So, in some ways, the Roster 
is taking form as it's, in a lot of ways, being stripped out. All right, so we talked Von Miller. We talked Taylor Rapp. Coming up next, Mitch Trubisky back as QB2. And I have some thoughts on the offensive line. A couple of different things, whether it's draft and a free agent that I want to bring up, so be sure to stick with me. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for, and with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because of the eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. You must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker-dealer. All right, folks, welcome back. Let's talk Mitch Trubisky. Let's talk offensive line. So Mitchell Trubisky has agreed to terms to come back to Buffalo. Do not have the parameters of this deal yet. We'll speculate it on on what it is in just a moment, but I don't have the the numbers. I don't have the years. I don't have any of the dollars. That information is not available yet. But Mitch Trubisky, 29 years old, he turns 30 in August, was the Bills' backup quarterback in 2021. He spent the last two seasons with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and of course was the number two overall pick in the 2017 NFL Draft and spent his first four seasons as the Bears' starting quarterback. So what's happened since he was last in Buffalo back in 2021? Well, he spent two seasons in Pittsburgh. He started seven games. The Steelers went two and five in those seven games. He completed 64% of his passes, 157 passing yards per game, eight touchdowns, 10 interceptions, Passer rating of 77.6. Those are not good numbers. Also, it was not a great situation. That offense was terrible in Pittsburgh with Matt Canada as the offensive coordinator. They had a bad offensive line. I mean, in 2022 and 2023, they were a bottom eight overall offense. Now, it is interesting, kind of the contract journey that Mitch Trubisky went through in Pittsburgh because he signed one year, two and a half million with the Bills in 2021. And his initial contract with Pittsburgh was two years, $14.3 million. And then they signed him to a two-year, $11.3 million extension. So, like, the guy signed two contracts with Pittsburgh in two seasons. He still gets cut after this past year. And I think the, the quarterback situation in Pittsburgh is just kind of goofy, right? They, they signed Mitch Trubisky. They draft Kenny Pickett in the first round. You know, neither plays particularly well. Kenny Pickett looks pretty good as a rookie. He looks like a disaster in year two. Before you know it, Mason Rudolph is starting games down the stretch in 2023. They go on a bit of a heater. They win some games. They get to the playoffs. They lose the Bills in the playoffs. Mason Rudolph is starting over a healthy Kenny Pickett late in the season. Like, it it was goofy. I think Mitch Trubisky is a better player than he was or showcased himself to be in Pittsburgh. I don't think he's a great NFL quarterback. I, I don't, right? I think he's a backup. But I think he's I think he's a solid backup quarterback. And I think Buffalo is just a better place for him. I think the infrastructure is just a lot better for a player to be a better version of himself. So he was cut by Pittsburgh, and 
I'm guessing that his contract is in Buffalo is going to be a lot more similar to the one he signed in 2021. One year, two and a half million dollars. I I personally, I'm totally fine with Mitch Trubisky as QB2. I think he's got a strong relationship with Josh Allen. Mitch Trubisky is a 57-game starter in the NFL. In those 57 games, his teams have a record of 31 and 26. And, I mean, that's above 500 on a not particularly great Bears team and a not particularly great Steelers team. I also want to remind you of these quotes that I brought up in the first episode on Wednesday morning, where I did 10 things I think about the Bills in free agency. And I, you know, that episode got lost pretty quick with all the news. But I talked a lot about the backup quarterback position, and I brought up some quotes courtesy of Sal Marianara of Rochester uh, Democrat and Chronicle. He interviewed Brandon Bean at the NFL Scouting Combine and talked to him about the idea of drafting a quarterback. And I thought Bean had some some interesting quotes that I, I want to bring up to you right now in case you missed them yesterday. So on the idea of drafting a quarterback and the approach to the QB2, now that we know Mitch Trubisky is the answer there. This is what Bean said to Sal. He said, I know the value of the quarterback. If you don't have a guy under center who can do it, look what happened to San Francisco a couple of years ago in the NFC Championship game. We've been evaluating them for the last few years, but what round are you going to pick him to where you feel confident that he is your backup. If Josh goes down for two to four weeks at a minimum, if you've got a good roster, you're going to go two and two. That's kind of his job. Let's just hold steady until your starter gets back. So yes, in a perfect world, you would love to land that guy, but where do you do that? Do you do that in the second round? Do you do that in the fifth round when you're trying to find other players too? We like to try and have someone in there That's got some experience because experience is so key to be able to go in there cold, hasn't gotten reps all week, and go execute. But I've got this budget. I got it fitted all together, too. So that's weighing on all of it. I think it's a good point about the dynamics of if a backup quarterback has to play, they go in there cold. They're 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 not rep to start. And they have to go in and cold and try to give the team a chance. That's tough to do as a rookie. And for as appealing as it is to draft a quarterback in the mid rounds, the roster ability is always the hard conversation. Are you going to roster three quarterbacks? That's silly to me. And if you roster two, then you're one snap away from this guy, this mid round rookie. Being your quarterback. And I know Brock Purdy's a great example for people right now to point to. That is absolutely the exception. That is not normal at all. For every Brock Purdy, there are 15 Jake Fromms. And so I I, I tend to like Brandon Bean's approach to the backup quarterback position. Again, Josh Allen's the most durable quarterback in the NFL. Not particularly close. But while Josh Allen currently has the 15th longest active start streak in the history of the NFL, among quarterbacks, the NFL, on average, over the last two seasons, in each of the last two seasons, on average, teams have used more than two starting quarterbacks in the season, 66 starting quarterbacks each of the last two years in the NFL. The Bills have had one. Hopefully the good fortune with Josh Allen's availability continues. But as Sean McDermott even said this offseason, it's a bit of a warning. The amount of quarterbacks that are having to start in the NFL over the last two years is a bit of a warning. Let's hope we don't have to ever see Mitch Trubisky play. We don't. Let's hope we don't ever have to see anybody not named Josh Allen play. Meaningful snaps. Like the fourth quarter and kneel outs and that type of stuff. Come on in. Starting games, give me 17. The last thing I want to mention here, as you know, there's been a lot of moves for the Bills, particularly on the offensive line, cutting Mitch Morse, trading away Ryan Bates, re signing David Edwards, moving Connor McGovern to center. 
it's starting to make me think if we should be thinking more about the Bills and the possibility of an early pick in the draft for an offensive lineman. This is an outstanding offensive line class, and I haven't talked much about it because I really didn't think the Bills would be players in this offensive line class. And the reality is, like, no matter how you spin it, I understand the vision with the offensive line. I do. David Edwards returning minus Ryan Bates and Mitch Morse. You didn't get better on the offensive line. You lost two good pieces and you brought back one pretty good piece, right? Like you didn't get better with the offensive line. And so your interior right now to me is not as strong. And both of your starting tackles are in contract years. Spencer Brown, he'll be expired contract after 2024. Same with Deion Dawkins. I'm advocating for an extension right now for Deion Dawkins. I, I'm kind of thinking that's going to happen, but it hasn't happened yet. And again, it's Spencer Brown contract year. Should we be thinking more about offensive line for the Bills early in the draft for a, a class that's very good? I think I need to put it out there. Something that crossed my mind. I think we need to start thinking about it. Here's the last thing I'll say today. Also, when thinking about this interior offensive line, a player that was recently released is Brian Allen from the Los Angeles Rams. Was a 2018 fourth-round pick of the Rams. Was with Aaron Cromer, the Bills offensive line coach, in L.A. for three seasons. He actually signed in 2022. He signed a three-year, $24 million extension with the Rams. And then things have not been good since that. He uh, missed all but seven games in 2022 with knee and thumb injuries. And then in 2023, he got beat out by Coleman Shelton, who wound up being a pretty good player for them this past year and is probably going to get a nice contract. And so they cut Brian Allen in a, in a cap-saving move. But a guy that was drafted by Cromer, and Cromer has a lot of influence in the offensive lineman that he works with, and became a starter, signed a contract extension. Like you could see, you know, maybe Brian Allen is a bit of the plan for the Bills here. Just connecting the dots. I don't have any scoops. I'm speculating just like anybody else could. I don't have any scoops. You feel like as the Bills have shifted a lot of this into your offensive line, particularly at the center position, keep an eye on Brian Allen as a possibility to come through Buffalo, who, again, signed a three or $24 million extension in 2022. Since then, got beat out by someone else and was limited to seven games due to uh, knee, and, knee and thumb injuries. You talk about a player that just his value is probably not close to where it was. You get him on one of these like one year, $2 million deals, something like that. You test him out and you see if maybe he's a piece for you. At a minimum, he could be your backup center if everything goes well with the Connor McGovern transition. So food for thought there. All right, there you have it. Catching up on everything. As of this moment in time, it's just before 7 a.m. on the East Coast here. I am officially caught up. Anything that happens after 7 a.m. on the East Coast, we'll get to it in the next one, and hopefully we can get to that mock off season as well. I'll, I'll spend the rest of the day redoing that. So a lot of content coming, obviously, with the mock off season. any other moves that come through, and then next week is free agency, and suddenly the Bills look like they could be a little bit more active in that than we initially anticipated. So a lot going down here on Locked On Bills. We're daily all year long, and um, it's especially fun this time of year where there's so much going on. So don't miss anything. Make sure that you're subscribed. We'd love it if you took a second to rate, review, and share the podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Go Bills. And I'll catch up with you again real soon.